Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So far we had uh, three lectures on Aryabhatiya. So in this fourth part, I will be definitely concluding Aryabhatiya, and then we will uh, move on to uh, a bit of Jaina mathematics. So in the last lecture on Aryabhatiya, so I was explaining to you about uh, the methods by which Aryabhata has derived the sign tables. So he has suggested. And then we also saw certain uh, gnomonic problems, so problems that can be handled with Shanku. We saw a couple of Nyayas, and uh, in this lecture, I will basically start with uh, the series. In fact, I touched upon the arithmetic progression which has been dealt by Aryabhata 2. So, in fact, there are a few other problems which I am <coughs> skipping on Ganitapada. So, I will be just highlighting two more uh, problems and then I will move on to the last part of Ganitapada, which discusses the Kuttaka problem. So, Kuttaka is a very interesting uh, terminology, which has been used to refer to a certain process. So, by which we will keep on reducing the numbers. So, Kuttanam is basically, so hitting on the head in Tamil, Kutra Dhanal, so that is what it is. So, it is basically pounding or pulverizing, so things are just brought down. Okay. So, that is the that is perhaps the origin of the term Kuttaka. So, the formulation of the problem, then I will uh, give you an example of how it has been used in astronomy. In fact, the very purpose of uh, the Kuttaka seems to have been uh, to solve certain problems in astronomy. We will see a, a single example from Bhaskara's uh, commentary and then I will uh, explain in great detail the couple of verses, so by in through which Aryabhata has presented this Kuttaka algorithm. So, then I will have an example, then we will move on to Jaina mathematics. See when I say Jaina mathematics, so I refer to the earlier part of Jaina mathematics. The earlier part of Jaina mathematics has not been in Sanskritam, so it is in Prakrit, Gatha, etc. So it is a bit difficult to decipher the texts themselves, and the texts themselves are not uh, available, and some of the commentaries are taken as the resources for deciphering what has <laughs> been there in the Jaina earlier Jaina texts. So with this, uh, I will uh, first of all introduce an interesting verse from Aryabhatiyam. This verse is presenting a formula by which we will be able to find out the number of terms given arithmetical series, given that you know the sum of the series and first term and the common difference. So, the verse goes like this, Gachoshtottara gunitat Dvigunad Dyuttara Vishesha Varga Yutat, Moolam Dvigunad Dyunam Svottara Bhajitam Sarupardham. Gachaha refers to the number of terms in an arithmetic series. Gachaha. So, Ashta Uttara Gunitat. So, in fact, in the previous verse, so we had the sum mentioned the sum of the series, the formula for finding the sum mentioned. And therefore, in this verse, so it is not explicitly stated, but since Aryabhatiya, as I was mentioning earlier, is more or less composed in sutra style. In sutra style, so we have something called Adhyahara. So, whatever is not presented in this sutra and if it is available in the previous sutra, we borrow it. So, this is the kind of thing which seems to have been done here. And since he was speaking about the sum in the previous verse, so, here we have to take the sum. So, gachaha ashta buttara gunitat. So, ashta is 8, buttara is the common difference. So, gachaha, gachaha. So, we have to just split it up. Ashta uttara gunitat, then dviguna dyuttara vishesha varga yutat. 
adi is the first term dviguna adi is 2 times a uttara vishesha so vishesha as i was mentioning is difference okay so dviguna adi uttara is 2a minus d and then varga is square yuta is addition so this term 8sd is added to 2a minus d square so this is what it is dviguna adi uttara vishesha varga yuta then what is to be done moolam you take the square root of that dvigunaadi unam so minus 2a moolam dvigunaadi unam svottara bhajitam so swam here refers to the so the series as such uttara is so the common difference the common difference in the series that forms the divisor then the last term is sarupa ardham sarupa is rupa is 1 so sarupa is so rupena saha so add 1 to that and then he says ardham so you have to divide by 2 so this basically gives the number of terms in an arithmetic series provided you know s d and a so this is the formula which has been given it is an interesting uh, thing uh, to see why aryabhata has specified this in this particular form it has been commented by nilakantha wherein he has shown a certain way of proving this result not by algebra but by geometrical construction okay so you can think of uh, so cube piled upon so in fact uh, a series can be considered to be shreddy shreddy is step by step so a a plus d a plus d and so on so similar kind of construction can be used to actually show this result so this result as such looks complicated and if one were to show this can be of course written in various ways so the right hand side so can be written in various ways and this particular way in which this has been written seems to be stemming from the fact that they might have had a certain way of looking at it and uh, that has been shown by nilakantha so which i am not uh, discussing right now certain algebraic identities have also been presented by aryabhata so this is just a sample which i want to give aryabhata has also discussed uh, rule of 3 of course uh, so professor shiram so in his talks will be covering all that in great detail but uh, this being the earliest text so i wanted to present more or less so on various issues which aryabhata has discussed suppose you know the product of two numbers and you also know the difference so this is the kind of problem which uh, aryabhata has chosen here will you be able to find out those two <coughs> numbers so this is the question if x minus y is a and x y is b then how do you find x y so this is the relation which has been given by aryabhata in this verse he says dvikriti gunat so dvikriti dvi is 2 kriti is square so dvikriti is 2 square which is 4 guna is multiplication dvikriti gunat samvargat samvarga i have been repeatedly saying is product so suppose you know the product of two numbers and that product here refers to samvarga xy let us say is b so dvikriti gunat so if you look at this expression so which uh, gives the value for x and y the first term is dvikriti and then samvarga guna okay 4 times b dvikriti guna samvargat dvyantara vargena so the two numbers which you consider dvyantara is the difference of the two varga is square so dvyantara vargena sanyutat see you have to add this and then you take the square root moolam antara yuktam heenam see antara is uh, difference yuktam okay so antara yuktam heenam so gunakara dvayam dalitam dalitam is half of it okay so this is uh, sort of this is one of the algebraic identities which he presents and this may be useful in various contexts so this algebraic identities have also been presented in the form of words so i mean like we memorize what is the uh, value of x in a quadratic equation so minus b plus r minus root a so that is the kind of uh, thing so this has been presented in the form of verses now i move on to the kuttakara algorithm so this kuttakara algorithm is primarily a method by which you will be able to find out 
solution to the first order indeterminate equation. Okay. So, the indeterminate equation will have two variables in this uh, and the first order we have just two variables and uh, a step by step procedure has been delineated by Aryabhata in two verses for solving this equation. And uh, why were they worried about solving this? I will show you through an example the context in which they had to necessarily find a solution for this. So, this is primarily to solve astronomical problems. So, Kuttaka is referring to the process of pulverizing something. So, basically a repeated operation. So, even hammering, so something is a repeated operation. And here what we do is, so given two numbers, we will keep on successively dividing one by the other. So, this can be thought of to be similar to the Euclidean algorithm and by mutual division, we will keep on reducing the ma magnitude of those two numbers and at some stage, we will stop this. So, in can, it can be stopped at any stage and then you can go and construct what the two numbers x and y are. This algorithm also plays a very key role in solving Varga Prakriti, which uh, I will also be discussing a little later when we discuss about Brahma Gupta and it will also be touched upon by Professor Srinivas. This Kuttakara occurs in various contexts. So, therefore, Bhaskara classifies this Graha Kuttakara, Rashi Kuttakara, Lipta Kuttakara, Vara Kuttakara and so on and so forth. If it is in arising in the context of dealing with the revolution number of planets, you call it Graha Kuttakara. This can arise in various occasions. So, suppose you want to express some magnitude in terms of degree, some in num some other uh, magnitude. So, if you have to handle those two, so again there will be a Kuttakara. So, Rashi is basically some number. So, Rashi, Lipta, so all that requires a Kuttakara method. So, to place the problem in more concrete way. So, let us consider a number n. So, this is how it can be easily understood. There are different ways in which this Kuttakara problem can even be presented, but we choose one particular way which is very close to the method which has been described by Aryabhata. Suppose there is a number n and this number when divided by a, it gives some value and when divided by b, it gives some other value and then plus some remainder, so quotients plus some remainder. So, n is equal to a x plus r 1 is also equal to b by plus r 2. So, it can be easily seen that, uh, so this can be represented in this particular form, we choose this way b by minus c is equal to a x, where c is the difference of the two remainders r 1 and r 2. So, the problem is given a, b and c. So, we have to find integer solutions for x and y. So, this is all Kuttakara is all about. So, this is the, this is an indeterminate equation because we have only one equation and we have two variables. So, therefore, it is not so trivial to find a solution in all the cases. In certain cases, we can easily guess the solution, but in most of the cases, it will not be trivial and we need a certain systematic procedure by which we will be able to solve this equation. From the viewpoint of history, this equation has been generally referred to as Diophantine equation, so which is not quite correct. So, if one were to look at from the historical viewpoint, the in fact, Diophantus also attempted a slightly different kind of a problem. He was not even trying to find integer solutions to this problem. He was trying to find rational solutions and rational solutions are far more easier than getting integer solutions for this problem. So, for okay. So, I will give you uh, the example, one of the examples which has been presented by Bhaskara to give you a flavor of the context in which this Kuttakara problem arises in astronomy. In fact, the Bhaskara says, Graha Ganite Kuttakaro Yojyate, so you will say, Graha Ganite Yojyate, so Lipta Ganite Yojyate, Rashi Ganite Yojyate. So, all that he says. So, Graha Ganite, I am trying to present you how Kuttakara arises. Pravibhaganaha kena gunitaha mandala shesham apaniya 
Bhudivasanam bhagam dadyuriti. This is the problem. So, Ravi Bhagana is basically the number of revolution made by the sun. So, Ravi Bhagana, huh? kena gunitaha multiplied by which factor? Mandala Shesham Apaniya Bhudivasanam Shuddham Bhagam. In fact, uh, this is a very important problem in the sense that Indian astronomers have presented a very large period. So, this so for you to have a much general picture, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes. So, you have a very large period. So, you can call it Kalpa, you can call it Mahayuga, whatever be the period that you want to define. Let you define, let us define this. And uh, this large period is to see that, so the various planets which are moving in various orbits, so they complete some integral number of revolutions. So, there will be some remainder here, some remainder there. So, now you have to see to it that you will be able to get a certain period by which all of them can make integral number of revolutions. So, it is in this context, this Kuttakara naturally arises. Okay. And uh, here uh, Bhaskara says, Bhudivasa is basically the number of civil days. So, by number of civil days, I mean the number of sunrises that take place in a given period. See, when sun starts moving or moon starts moving, so it may start at a particular point, so it will make some n number of revolutions and when it comes back, so it need not be the same time. So, can we see to it that after making integral number of revolutions, E, we can we fix a certain period by which this will also complete integral number of revolutions and something else also will do. So, that is the kind of context in which this arises. He says, Madhyam Ravehe Mrigapato Dhanuram Shakardhe Drishtam Maya Dinakarodaya Kala Jatam. So, Dinakarodaya Kala Jatam means, so Dinakara Udaya, so when it rises. So, I just start take the beginning of this period. So, Aganyatam Dinaganaha Bhatta Shastra Siddhaha, this Bhatta Shastra refers to Arya Bhatta Shastra, Yatascha Tasya Bhaganaha Kalikala Siddhaha. So, this is the kind of problem which uh, Bhaskara wants to attempt with the reference to the uh, number of revolutions made by the planet. So, now we move on to the Kuttakara problem as such. So, and the solution which Arya Bhatta gives. These verses are not very easy, uh, so you may have uh, to follow it carefully because the kind of uh, compounds which Aryabhata has formed and the terminology which he has employed may not be that familiar even to those who are fairly conversant with Sanskrit. <laughs> so, Ajikagra Bhagaharam Chindyat Unagra Bhagaharena Shesha Paraspara Bhaktam Mati gunam agrantare kshiptam. So, this is the first half of the algorithm which has been given by Aryabhata. So, then the later half completes the whole algorithm. The term agra, agra normally means so a tip kind of a thing. So, here this has been used in the sense of getting a reminder. See, suppose you think of So, representing a certain number, so by this magnitude. So, if you keep on dividing this, there will be some remainder which comes. So, this is the tip that he means. So, by agra he means remainder. If you go back and then see this, see, so n is equal to a x plus r 1 and b y plus r 2. So, r 1 and r 2 are referred to as agras. So, Adhikagra if R 1 is greater than R 2, so you call R 1 as Adhikagra and R 2 as Unagra, fine. So, Adhikagra Bhagaharam Chindyatu, Chindyatu means, so may you divide, so okay, Chedanam is cutting, so cutting is referring to the process of division here. So, in fact, Bhaskara starts his commentary by saying Agram Sheshaha. So, in common language we call it Seshaha, but uh, Aryabhata has used the term Agra. So, Agram Seshaha, Adhika Agram, so for which the remainder is large, okay. Adhika Agra Bhagaharam. So, here, so this is a compound Bhagaha Hriyate Yasmat, so that is how we need to understand. So, the number, so which is being divided, okay. 
So, in Sanskrit you can form various kinds of compounds. So, Rameshwara when you say, so Rama is Ishwara is one way of saying or you can say for whom Rama is Ishwara, so, all that can be said. So, here Bhagaharam should be understood as Bhagaha Kriyate Yasmat, it should be taken as a Bahubrihi compound, so from which we are removing the part, so which means it is the dividend. So, Chindyat may you divide, when you say divide, divide by what? So, Bhagaharena, see Unagra Bhagaharena, okay. so, by the other number for which the remainder is small. So, Unagra Bhagaharena Chindyat. So, the process does not end there. So, this is the initial stage in which you get the first quotient. So, then you will get some remainder, take the remainder and then you so divide the number by which you divided before. So, the process is going to be repeated. So, for you to see this is the kind of thing. Suppose A is Adhikagra, B is Unagra. So, you have to do this. So, this Q is the first quotient and then so R1 is the remainder you once again divide B, so you will have something R2 is the remainder, you should keep on doing the process. So, this is what is referred to by Aryabhata, Sesha Paraspara Bhaktam when he says, so Sesha is remainder, so Paraspara Bhaktam is, so the previous remainder is going to become the dividend now and this remainder, so by which you divide will become the dividend in the next stage, so you have to do it con continuously, Sesha Paraspara Bhaktam. Then when you reach a certain stage, so this can be terminated and uh, at that stage, so he says you have to do a certain process, that process is Mati Gunam. So, Mati Gunam is multiplication, so Mati Gunam means multiply by Mati, okay. Matya Gunanam Kartavyam, so that is Mati Gunam. So, what is this Mati? Mati normally means buddhi, intellect. So, here he has used that word uh, to refer to a certain number which you are going to guess by making use of your buddhi. So, that is why he is calling, he is calling it as Mati. So, Mati Gunam means a number which you will guess. So, you have to make a guess so that the product of this Mati and the remainder that you have, so minus or plus something will be the divisor will exactly be multiple of something else. Okay. So, just keep it in mind as we see the algorithm it will become clear, but Mati is basically referring to a number which you have to guess at a particular stage. So, you can stop the division at any stage in fact. So, if you are carefully analyze the algorithm, it is a very beautiful algorithm. So, Mati Gunam multiplied by Mati. So, this is that is why it is called an optional number. Agrantare Kshiptam. Agrantara, so I told you Agra refers to remainder, Agrantara is difference of the remainders. So, that is what is denoted as C, see the C refers to R1 minus R2, Agrantara. So, Agrantare Kshiptam, so all that he says is, so you have to get a Mati and this Mati has to be multiplied by some number and to that this Agrantara has to be, Kshiptam means thrown. Okay. Agrantare Kshiptam, so basically it, it could be either addition or subtraction. Okay. You have to uh, do either addition or subtraction, the Kshiptam is referring to either of them. That we understand only from the commentaries, Agrantare Kshiptam. So, in fact it says, Katham Punaha Svabuddhi Gunaha Kriyate, Ayam Rashihi, see so he beautifully says Bhaskara, Ayam Rashihi this number. Kena gunitam multiplied by what? Idam agrantaram prakshipya. See, you have to multiply this rashi by some number. So, and then plus or minus c vishodhyava. See, prakshipya vishodhyava. Asya rashehe shuddham bhagam dasyati. Shuddham bhagam means bhagam is basically the quotient. Shuddham bhagam means without any reminder. So, it is perfectly divisible, that is what it means. So, then he also says Sameshu Kshiptam Vishameshu Shodhyam, when should you add C, when should you remove C. Sama is even, Vishama is odd, so when the number of quotients that you have, see depending upon the uh, process, so you will get a certain number of quotients, if the number of quotients is odd you have to do something, if it is even you have to do and he says Sama if it is 
even kshiptam you have to add when it is vishama you have to uh, remove it okay shodhyam so how do you know this there he says sampradaya avichhedat so aryabhata has worked out this is how it seems to be so it is a sampradaya which has been handed down to us okay traditionally they have discovered this to be the method and therefore we interpret it that way so vyakhyayate this is how i explain this okay now i move on to the second part see in fact at uh, this stage of the verse uh, we have to see the commentary because what is to be done with all this so that has not been very explicitly stated by aryabhata in the verse and therefore something has to be uhyam okay so uhyam means to be guessed so evam parasparena labdhani okay if you divide so you will get a set of uh, quotients labdhani padani avasthapya so you have to arrange them in a particular way this has not been stated in the verse so that is why the commentator states something has to be uhyam means you have to uh, make a guess so padani avasthapya matischa adhaha so i will quickly tell you so you can keep this in mind and then you can understand the verse so we got a, we did a series of divisions so we got a series of quotients so all that has to be done is you have to arrange them one below the other see q1 q2 blah 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 and so on so qn let us say up to that so one by one below the other you have to arrange so this is generally referred to as valli valli means a sequence okay so all the quotients form the sequence and then below that you have to place this mati and then some other number yes so which is actually the quotient which is obtained by doing this operation so i said you have to make a guess of mati so mati into what is to be done is the last remainder that you get so this i am denoting as see for instance so you have this uh, division process denoted here and the last remainder is so let us say r 2n plus 1 now r 2n plus 1 into mati okay so this is the guess so the number that is guessed so how should you guess you should guess in such a way that r 2n plus 1 into t plus c is divisible by r 2n the previous okay so this is the algorithm so that uh, is something which has not been stated in the so that particular mati also has to be placed avasthapya one below the other you have to place matischa adhaha you have to place the mati below and paschima labdhancha matyaha adhaha paschima labdham means once you guess this mati and then plus minus c if it is divisible by some other r 2 n so then that quotient is what is referred to as paschima labdha here paschima labdha means after making guess of mati and after doing this division whatever be the quotient so that is the ultimate thing that you find out in the process after that it is a matter of multiplication and getting the value of x and y so the process as such ends here and therefore paschima labdham that which is obtained later matyaha adaha you have to place that also below so that is how it is see get all the quotients place one below the other place mati and place the quotient that you get by doing this process okay matyaha adaha then what is to be done so this is the arrangement so till that is over now i am moving to the second verse which is given by aryabhata so adha upari gunitam so having created this valli now so what is to be done adha upari gunitam so the number which is there penultimate number has to be multiplied by the previous number upari gunitam means you multiply the number which is above that and then antya yuk so below that you place the quotient so you have to add that also so to show you here if you have done this so at this stage what you have to do is you have to take a product of t and qn q2n this is adha upari gunitam multiply and then whatever is below it you have to add that so this is how he describes the algorithm adha upari gunitam antya yuk okay add the antya unagra cheda bhajite shesham so the process is more or less over so unagra cheda bhajite so he says so this has to be divided by b 
Unagra is smaller remainder. So, in fact, both A and B are referred to as Chedas. So, so you may think that uh, see for instance if you look at this, so A is divided by B, so how can this be called Cheda? So, in fact, both are Chedas in the sense of the main problem that you consider. See if you consider the main problem, so A is divisor for this, B is also divisor, you have to get X and Y. Okay. So, therefore, both are referred to as Chedas here. So, Unagra Cheda Bhajite Shesham. So, whatever comes as the remainder, Adhikagra Cheda Gunam. Okay. So, this has to be multiplied by the Adhikagra Cheda. See, you find the Cheda being used here as well as here. One should not get confused. So, Unagra is also Cheda, Adhikagra is also Cheda with reference to number n. But at a later stage, so B becomes uh, the divisor and A becomes the dividend, that is a different thing. Okay. So, Unagra Cheda Gunam, Dvicheda Agram, Adhikagra Yutam. So, when you add A to that, then you will be able to get XY. So, this is the algorithm which has been described in two verses by Aryabhata. So, I will uh, leave this. So, this is just the way the process of division which has to be done and all the quotients are obtained. So, you have to leave the first quotient. So, when you count the number of quotients, see this is something which has to be kept in mind. The prescription is, so the C has to be added provided the quotients are even and the C has to be subtracted provided the quotients are odd. So, in doing this one should not commit the mistake of taking Q also into account. So, it is only after this, so the number of quotients have to be counted. So, this division of A by B should be left out. Okay. So, this is how things are arranged and Q 1, Q 2, Q n minus 1, Q n, T is Mati and then this. See, now what is to be done? Having created this valley, so you have to multiply this by this. So, Q n into T plus S. So, let us call this as beta 1 and then the rest have to be just placed like this. So, when you move on to the next stage, so this will be multiplied by this and then T will be added and then this will go on. See, so Q n minus 1 into beta 1 this quantity plus T. So, this is the algorithm and then when you uh, reach the stage where you have only 2, there is nothing more to be added, you understand. So, at this stage you stop this multiplication and creating the table valleys. So, this is the series of valleys. So, having done this, so finally he says, see if you look at the verse, so ante yukku, once you do that, unagra cheda bhajite shesham, see. So, unagra cheda bhajite means so, this has to be divided by B. B was referred to as Unagra Cheda. Okay. So, A was Adhikagra Cheda. So, divide by that. So, the remainder whatever you get that is basically X. Okay. So, we wanted to find out X and Y. So, he described a certain process and he says after you reach these two numbers. So, then you make the product of this the last number with B and when you divide that. So, the whatever remainder that you get is basically your x. Okay. So, and n is equal to a x plus r 1. So, let us take an example. So, let us have this equation 45 x plus 7 is equal to 29 y. So, what do we do? So, we start this division process. So, 45 divided by 29 what you get is 1 and then remainder is 16. So, you take this as the div dividend now. So, divide you get 1 here again 16 remainder is 13 and uh, so this 16 becomes the dividend now. So, you have 1, so you have 3 as the remainder. So, then 13 becomes the dividend. So, you have 4 as the quotient. Fine. So, how many quotients do we have in this? Is it odd or even? We have 1, 2 and 3. So, this is the case of having odd number of quotients. So, what was the prescription? The prescription is when you have odd number of quotients, the C factor has to be subtracted. 
before that we need to make a guess of t. <laughs> so, this this number, so now we have arrived at a situation where we can form the valley. So, for forming valley I should plus q 1, q 2 and so on, I have to make a guess of this mati now. So, this remainder last remainder is 1, so 1 times t minus 7 should be divisible by the previous remainder. So, you can easily guess that it is 10 will satisfy this. So, t is 10, so I just put it as 10. So, the when uh, I divide by 3, the quotient that I get is 1, so because it is 3, so you just have 1 as the last thing. So, this is how it has to be arranged. So, at this stage, so having formed this, it is just a matter of simple multiplication and then creating further valleys. See, so 10 times 4 plus 1, so that will be this number. So, this has to be taken as it is. Then 41 times 1 plus 10, that will be this number. So, 41 has to be taken as it is, and then 51 will be taken as it is. So, 51 times 1 plus 41 is 92 over. So, all the valley operations are over. So, finally, having reached this stage, what is to be done? Take the last number 92 and then it was said, see if you look at the verse, so he says ante yuki unagra cheda bhajite shesham. So, unagra cheda bhajite, so this is basically dividing by unagra cheda, so 92 has to be divided by 29. So, the quotient will be 3, is it fine? So, having obtained this, see in the form of algorithm, so when you looked at this, so the last thing you have to divide by b, unagra cheda is b, bhajita is divided. So, when you do that, so this is basically saying 92 has to be divided by 29. So, you get 3 as the quotient and 5 as the remainder. So, whatever is the remainder is basically x. Okay. So, now let us see. So, this equation, so this is x, so n, the given number n is 49 times x, so plus 7 and that uh, fixes our y also as 8, so finished. So, x is 5 and y is 8. So, one thing which you need to understand with reference to this algorithm is, so once you have one solution, you have infinite number of solutions. So, this is pretty evident, see for instance, if x is equal to alpha and y is equal to beta is a solution, is a solution to, so the equation that we had was uh, b y minus c is equal to a x, then so x is equal to alpha plus b m and y is equal to, so beta plus a m is also a solution m is any integer. So, this can be easily checked. So, where m is any integer. So, any choice of m has to satisfy and therefore, it is pretty evident that we have infinite number of solutions to this, fine. So, this is all the algorithm is all about, Kuttaka algorithm. So, now I have to leave the Kuttaka algorithm and then move on. In fact, what has been done is uh, later, uh, of course, Brahma Gupta has discussed this, Aryabhata is the first to discuss this Kuttaka algorithm. So, Brahma Gupta has also discussed this, so Bhaskara has done, Mahavira has done, so all other later astronomers have provided certain kind of modified version of this Kuttaka and uh, so those will be covered when we discuss those texts. Now, I move on to give you a flavor of how this Jaina mathematics has been 
before of course this Mahaviracharya Jaina tradition. In Jaina tradition, uh, it seems that uh, this mathematics was also sort of considered as a part of their religious literature. So, it is in some sense like I mean uh, see we have this Jyotisham as a part of Vedanga. So, in fact, there is a text called Vedanga Jyotisham. So, it basically deals with some kind of mathematics. So, there it I think it is in a much more uh, in fact, they say there is a section called Ganitan Yoga they say. So, in their religious literature itself. So, some of the uh, ancient Jaina mathematical works are listed here Jambudvipa Prajnati, Surya Prajnati, Sthananga Sutra, Bhagavati Sutra, Uttaradhyana Sutra, Anuyogadvara Sutra, Triloka Sutra, of course, Ganitasara Sangraha is a much later work. So, our knowledge of the early Jaina works are primarily based upon commentaries as some of these original works have not even come to light. So, this is true of many of these literatures. It is very unfortunate that even today with all the sophistication that we have, so not much care has been taken to preserve these manuscripts. Okay. <coughs> so, results of mensuration, so I will just list a few of them. See for your information, this Brahma Sputa Siddhanta, we do not have good manuscripts. Aryabhatiya fortunately, we have plenty of manuscripts and its commentary Brahma Sputa Siddhanta's commentary by Prathudaka Swami, there is only one and even that is not accessible. So, that is how things are. So, it is a very sad state of affairs. Anyway, so let us come to this Jaina literature and some of this uh, formula related to mensuration. So, I am just listing here. So, for instance, they say the circumference of circle is root time root 10 times the <coughs> diameter. So, in fact, even Brahma Gupta sort of uses this value. So, this is somewhat uh, crude as we know compared to the value which has been specified by Aryabhata. Anyway, but for practical purposes, so this is how they have been using this. So, then area of a circle, so is one fourth circumference time diameter. So, this is all right, but the value of circumference is not quite accurate. So, then they say chord. So, in fact, today morning we had a uh, discussion at great length of the Aryabhata Sutra, right? Jashara Samvarga. So, that is all this is. So, it is basically the product of chords, they are same. Okay. So, Shara, so this is how it will be. See, if you consider this as chord, this is one Shara, this is another Shara. So, this is Shara as far as this is concerned because this is bow and if you consider this as bow, this is shara. So, the product of this will be the same as the product of these two. So, that is what it amounts to. So, this is stated in a different way, but that is what it amounts to. So, that is why this factor 4 comes here anyway. So, then shara see. So, once you know the diameter and chord, will you be able to make a guess of shara. So, this is a slightly different way. And there are various approximations which people have been trying, see, to obtain shara given this ja, to obtain ja given shara, and so on. So, there are various formulae which has been given by Jaina mathematicians. <coughs> so, by shara, so you should understand that it is basically r minus r cos theta. Okay. To give you a flavor of how the original verses are. So, I have just quoted two verses. So, this is uh, maybe in Prakrit, I do not know, but definitely not in Sanskrit and I have tried to make a Sanskrit rendering of this, so that we try to understand this. So, see here, Triguniya Vasam. So, this is Trigunita Vyasa. Okay, three times the diameter. Parihi. 
So, it is paridhi, paridhi is circumference. Okay. So, C is 3 times D, then daha guna thira vama moolam cha. So, this is the see cha is obviously and. So, parihi is paridhi, paridhi he gives two expressions, one is trigunita vyasa, the other is dasha guna, see dasha guna multi, ten, 10 multiplied by vistara should be this thing, vistara is diameter. Okay. So, vistara varga moolam, so vistara is d square. So, root of 10 times d square is also, so this is what they have stated, no? so root 10 times the diameter. So, this is uh, the expression for the circumference once you know the diameter. So, these are the two different forms in which they have given. Then, paridhi vyasa turyam. So, in uh, philosophical literature you will see there are four states. So, one is Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti and then they call Turyavastha. So, Turya is the fourth state. So, Turyam in the sense here uses one fourth you understand. So, Paridhi Vyasa Turyam, okay. Paridhi Hatha Vyasa. So, Paridhi is C. Hatha is multiplication, Vyasa is diameter, Turyam one fourth of that. So, that gives the Kheta Phalam, this is what it says, Kheta Phalam should be Kshetra Phalam. Okay. So, Badara Sukshmam, so that is a bit difficult to, <laughs> Sukshmam is perhaps more accurate. Okay. So, it is a Kshetra Phalam. So, this is the form in which we find, see some of these uh, verses have been cited by Bhaskara also in his commentary to Aryabhatiya and most of the uh, earlier Jaina works are in this language which is not far different from Sanskrit, but it requires a certain familiarity to figure out them. And uh, this literature, Jaina literature, philosophical literature is also in this. Similarly, one more verse, so Ishuhinam Vishkambham, so Vishkambham they always say Vikambham, okay. so Ishuhinam Vishkambham, Chavugunitasuna, Chaturguneshuna, okay. Chaturguna Ishuna, okay. Ishu is Shara, so if we look at this, so if you know the formula it will be easy for you to decipher, otherwise it is not so easy. <laughs> So, this, uh, so Chaturgune Shuna, so multiply by 4 and he H suppose is Ishu, Dhanu, uh, then this Hade should be Hate, Du is Tu, Jiva Kritihi, see. So, Jiva is card, so card square, so you can have this approximation and that is what this says. Then Bana Kritihi, Shad Gunite. So, Bana Kadim Chahi Gunite. So, Chahi Che in Hindi, you know, Chahi Chahi Gunite. So, Tutha Jude, Tatra Yute, Dhanu Kritihi Bhavati. So, Dhanu Kritihi is Dhanu is arc. So, arc square is this. So, these are certain approximations, so which have been presented in Jaina works. So, finally, so, this Jainas also have this notion of uh, infinity expressed in slightly different ways. In fact, they speak of different kinds of infinities. So, but one should not simply compare with the Cantor's notion of infinity in our mind and then what they have spoken. I mean, that is not a good way of looking at things. But then what is interesting is, so they have uh, spoken of different kinds of infinities. Okay. So, we, today we have, so infinite number of infinities, infinite <laughs> so that is a different way. So, we have gone in a uh, much more advanced way of analyzing infinity. Uh, here, so they actually classify the number into Sankhya, Asankhya and Ananta. So, Sankhya is enumerable, Asankhya is unenumerable, 
and then ananta is sort of infinite and infinite also they say see ekataha anantam dvidha anantam and then desha vistara anantam see so infinite in terms of area one direction two direction and so on and infinite everywhere sarva vistara anantam and shashvata anantam so this has to do perhaps with the something which is eternal in time so eternality in terms of space in terms of time in terms of direction i mean they sort of classify this in various ways and so there are some interesting examples which jainas have chosen to convey what infinity is so for instance they say consider a trough whose diameter is of the size of the earth okay so consider a trough so which is 1 lakh yojanas so fill it up with white mustard seeds imagine <laughs> so filling a trough of the size of the earth and then with mustard seed you have to fill it up and keep counting them similarly fill up with mustard seeds other troughs of the size of various lands and seas okay so one is the size of the earth still it is difficult to reach the highest enumerable number so this is just to give you a certain conception of what we are talking about when we see large numbers pardon ah uh, that i don't know <laughs> okay so then uh, so we have also this uh, indices see that is very in interesting thing so they say see jainas have discovered about logarithms also but it's a bit difficult to figure out see first of all i must admit that i am not that conversant and secondly see even good editions and interpretations uh, very very clearly written things are not uh, available certain articles are there but uh, it is all sort of based on certain other commentaries but the point i want to convey is so they talk of varga varga ghana varga ghana varga varga see so all that see so they discuss about various kinds of indices so it is in this connection so people say that they also talk about this logarithms and uh, i just skip this and to give you an idea so what are the various topics which are discussed so in any typical jaina text you see parikarma so this you might have seen uh and professor shri ram uh, had uh, discussed about mahaviracharya so vyavahara rajju rashi yavat tavat unknown quantities so vikalpa of course permutation and combination so varga varga and so on so with this i conclude my session on aryabhatiya as well as jaina mathematics the ancient jaina mathematics okay so then we will have discussion on brahmagupta and so on Thank you.